Hey, good afternoon, everybody. It's Wade Crosby with Pioneer and Kurt Afdahl, Pioneer sales rep in the uh, Hudson, Wisconsin, River Falls area today, scouting some cornfields and um, just kind of asking Kurt the question of you know, how he works with his growers uh, in terms of helping them to drive not just corn silage yield, but also the optimum uh, nutrient content, optimum energy out of that silage yield. So Kurt, just asking the question, what are you kind of looking at when it comes to uh, helping your guys prepare for silage harvest? Here we are nearing the 20th of August and it's coming right around the corner for us. What are you looking for and what are you helping them with? We know my guys have worked really hard over the last five months producing this big grass plant and uh, we don't want to mess it up at this stage. We won't want to make sure that we take care of, we can put the optimum silage in the bunker. Uh, the three top drivers of corn silage yield are number one, harvest timing, number two, hydrogenetics, and number three, planting date that will attribute to our top silage yield. So I always kind of think about things in terms of what can we control? You know, it's, it's kind of futile for me to think about if it's out of my control, why focus on it? But certainly harvest timing is that next one coming up. I've, I've picked good genetics working with you. I've got my planting date turned out pretty well this year based on conditions. And now it's harvest timing is I, I for some degree can control that, right? So you're helping guys do what when it comes to time that silage harvest? Exactly, Wade. Well, pretty soon we're going to start uh, some burn down studies and just see how fast is the silage moving in maturity, how fast is our moisture coming down, and we can gauge just when should we plan on starting chop corn. Cool. Well, that's super helpful. And, you know, as you get out there, you got some, some numbers that really help us in, in understanding that, some uh, things that have been studied by the University of Wisconsin through Joe Lauer and uh, Dr. Bill Mahan reminds us all the time. I know you've worked closely with him throughout your career, but he's talking to us about how, you know, digestibility isn't really going to suffer that much if we can afford to put on just a little bit more starch content on there. And so there's some data to sort of back that up. And as you look to how you look at that and some very good, simple rules of thumb, the burn down studies are one thing, but you know, we're out there snapping a lot of ears this time of year too. What are you looking for as you snap those ears, Kurt? After snapping the ears, we're looking at as a general indicator is just a milk line. You know, we can see the milk line start to move from the top down towards the bottom, and that's how it gives us a general idea. It's not, it's not the end all of when do we, you know, manage our chopping, but it is a good indicator when we get starting our silage harvest as well. Excellent. And, you know, really, you know, I've always heard that rule of thumb that most of our, or excuse me, up to half of our uh, yield and silage is going to come from that starch. You know, it just happens to be also the energy content of that, and you kind of alluded to that in the beginning. So just uh, I thought I'd ask you a few questions about that today, Kurt, because, you know, you seem to uh, be a guy that's always on top of this with your customers, doing those burn downs, getting out there and helping them uh, calibrate things like uh, Harvest Lab, et cetera. Um, getting ready to actually maximize the yield and potential energy out of their crops. So appreciate all you do and, and any parting thoughts? Uh, just keep in mind that for every day the corn stands in the field, it will lay down as much as in one additional point per day of starch. And that's huge when it comes to making milk per acre. So we, we don't want to go too late so it's too dry, but then again, we want to make sure we can leave it as long as possible before starting our silage harvest as well. Perfect. Well, that's super helpful. And, uh, you know, that's kind of what uh, we try to provide here is not just a bag of genetics and uh, traits. We're trying to make sure that we do our best to service the products that we sell. And certainly in this neck of the woods, we're focused on cows, nutrition, et cetera. And, and uh, if you've got questions, we want you to reach out and make sure you get them answered. A lot of support on this end. So thank you, Kurt. And we'll get on with your day. Thank you.